So I finally watched Marvel's Eternals. Now when I first heard about this movie, I had no interest in it. Then after seeing the two trailers, I still didn't have any desire to check it out. But then something happened. In the early screenings, it got mixed to low scores with critics. Then after it was officially released, it got even lower scores. This caught my attention because it's very rare for an MCU movie to get such low ratings. You see, typically I don't care about the scores or ratings, but MCU films are typically always enjoyed by the critics and general audiences. Even the ones that people consider not that good, like Thor 2, Iron Man 2, Captain Marvel, hell even most recently, Black Widow. These are some pretty low tier MCU movies, you still receive some mostly positive ratings. So Eternals being the lowest rated MCU movie to date definitely caught my attention. So I wanted to see why this had so many negative reviews and if it really was the worst MCU movie. I had intentions of seeing it in theaters but I forgot about it. Luckily it came out on Disney Plus recently and so I watched it and now I see why it wasn't a hit with most people. Oh, you stink! <laughs> Before I start discussing why I think it does well, and the issues I have with it, I'll give you the gist of the story. So thousands of years ago, these superpower immortal beings called Eternals were sent to Earth by a Celestial, which is basically a giant god, to rid Earth of these monsters called Deviants. And so they do that, and then they go their separate ways to live on Earth until they are told by their Celestial Master that they can go home. Fast forward to present day, and the Deviants are back, so the Eternals must get back together and find out why. I won't dive too deep into the spoilers yet, I'll talk about a few things in particular later, but that's the gist of the story. Now let me tell you about some of the things that I enjoyed. So easily the best thing about this movie is the fact that they shot on location for most of these settings. Typically MCU movies and most blockbusters are shot in front of a green screen on a soundstage. It's cheaper and easier than having the actors and crew travel around to multiple places to get filming done. So it was actually refreshing seeing all these different locations and settings and knowing that it's a real place. So off the bat it gives things a different look, because it's not all just a computer generated background. Don't get me wrong, there are still several shots that could only be done with CGI, but even those ones look really cool. The ones with the Celestials really have an epic feeling to them. So visually I thought it looked really good with its practical locations. So from a filmmaking standpoint, it was pretty cool and refreshing seeing this stuff in an MCU movie. The central fight scene is also really cool, showing off what each of the Eternals can do, as well as this one in the Amazon forest. I thought this shit was pretty fun. Let me see what else do I got here. Yeah, that's basically it. It kind of drops the ball everywhere else. So for starters, one of the biggest issues is the characters. There's 10 of them, and as expected, they all feel rather shallow and boring as hell. The only one that I actually liked is Kingo, but even he feels like a comic relief character half the time. This was an issue that I knew was going to happen. There was no way they could properly develop and make you care about 10 characters in one movie. Even though it's two and a half hours long, making it longer than other MCU movies, it still wasn't nearly enough time to properly introduce, develop, and make me care about these characters. And hell, some of them aren't even that important to the climax of the movie. Kengo leaves before the final battle, so in retrospect, he didn't really actually do anything, Gilgamesh dies halfway through, Ajax is dead for the modern day portion of the story, and Athena is here to show you what happens when an Eternal is alive for too long, the way their memories start to have them go corrupt and turn on their fellow Eternals or something. I wish I could tell you more, but it's only mentioned twice, and by the end it actually doesn't really become a factor, so I wonder why it even mattered. Really thinking about it, they could have just removed several of these characters, and the movie would have mostly been the same by the end. What they could have done is taken elements and traits from multiple characters and put them into one. That way you have a smaller cast to focus on. The other big issue isn't just a lack of investment or development for the characters, is the fact that the movie is trying to do a few different things at once, and it's not doing any of them that well. It wants to tell this grand, epic story with celestial gods and these eternal superpower beings, showing how long they've been around and how big the threat is that they're facing. But they also want to tell you a story about how all these characters are a family, and how deeply connected they are to each other. And then they also try to throw in a deep philosophical question of whether or not it's right for them to stop this celestial from being born, because even though the celestial is going to kill everyone on the whole planet, it will actually go on to create many more plants, giving birth to billions of life forms, and if they stop that, then those life forms never get a chance to grow and evolve, or even exist. Oh, I forgot to mention, the whole big conflict is that there's a celestial being born in the middle of the Earth, and when it's born, it's going to destroy the entire planet. So they're trying to figure out a way to stop it. So it presents this all to you in small pieces throughout the movie, but none of it reaches its full potential. The epic story doesn't feel that epic, the characters don't feel like a family and have little to no chemistry with each other, and are very underdeveloped. And the philosophical question it presents is only briefly mentioned a few times, and not actually explored. And on top of all that, it's an MCU movie, so it has some restrictions right there. Mainly with its style of writing and the shoehorned in humor that makes the whole philosophical aspect feel watered down, and it makes certain moments less impactful because it's presented as a joke. So I guess you can say, it just lacks focus with its narrative. Oh, I almost forgot. There's this one deviant that is consuming the powers of the Eternals, and is getting stronger and evolving. But I swear, it feels so tacked on, and it pops up randomly throughout the movie, and it actually disappears for about an hour before randomly joining the final battle. This whole character could have been just cut out completely. Easily the worst MCU antagonist I've ever seen. I'd rather watch that Dark Elf from Thor The Dark World give me a lecture about how much he hates Asgard, than ever 
seeing this alpha deviant thing on screen ever again. Oh, garbage. So here's a spoiler for the final act if you care, but let's be real, you don't care. So since Icarus ends up stopping the rest of the Eternals from putting the Celestial to sleep, and had no intention of letting them actually succeed, even though he spent the whole movie getting them together, weird. This is how I think the movie should have gone. Personally, I think they should have focused on the question of whether or not it's right to stop the Celestial from being born, and have them come together and debate their perspective, before finally have it devolve into conflict, and have one side led by Icarus, who want the Celestial to be born, and the other led by Cersei's, who wants to put the Celestial to sleep. Have it similar to Civil War. There's several things I don't like about that movie, but what it does well is present to you where Tony Stark and Steve Rogers stand, and why they are fighting each other. You see them argue their points, and you see them come to a disagreement. They could have gone that route with Eternals, because the whole final act is them fighting Sprite and Icarus. And hell, even Kengo agrees with Icarus, but then he leaves before the final battle. So the end goal seemed to be have some for, and some against the destruction of the Earth. So might as well make that the focus and set it up earlier, instead of literally just bringing it up in the last 30 minutes. Seriously, Icarus has a flashback, and then when the flashback is over, he goes and stops the rest of the Eternals, and he shows his true motives. It was just handled so poorly. Also, cut out everything with the Alpha Deviant involving, because it's barely in the movie anyway, so it doesn't need to be there. And I think that's what this movie really needed. A tighter, more focused story. Instead, it presents to you a bunch of little pieces of ideas, and never fully explores them. Also, even though these Eternals are super powered, I found the action scenes to be pretty underwhelming. I mean, Icarus and Gilgamesh scenes are kinda cool, but everybody else, not so much. Like I already mentioned, I think the intro battle was pretty cool, and same with the one in the Amazon. But I think the climax in the final battle was just really weak. I mean, you have Thena, who is a warrior, and Makari, who is a speedster, fighting Icarus, who is essentially the Superman. But yet, it wasn't creative and it wasn't very fun, outside of a few little interactions. Oh yeah, and Fastos was there too. It was 3 on one and it was very lackluster. And the last thing I'll touch on is the CGI. It varies from looking really good to looking a bit like ass. But to be honest, I don't think it's a big deal because overall, it looks fine. I've been seeing people say that at times it looks a bit like a PS3 cutscene. I don't think it ever gets that bad or dated, but it does vary from looking great to not so great. I just thought I'd mention it. Now according to reviews, reviewers, and for people who've seen it, this is the worst MCU movie. I'm not 100% certain about that, but it's easily one of the worst. I mean between this, Black Widow, Captain Marvel, Thor 2, and Iron Man 2, I'm not sure which is the worst. Because they're all bad for different reasons. Captain Marvel, Thor 2, and Black Widow are bad because they are the most bland, uninspired, cookie cutter, formulaic MCU movies out there. Iron Man 2 is bad because of the drop in quality with the writing, and the direction they took the story, and Tony Stark as a character. And Eternals is bad for all the reasons we just listed, but the main ones would be the lack of focus with the story, and the shallow, boring, underdeveloped characters. I really think the only thing this movie has going for it is the interesting philosophical question that it brings up but never explores, and the fact that they shot several of these scenes on location. So from a filmmaking aspect, it is really neat and kinda cool, but most general audience members won't really pay attention to that and won't really care. So essentially what's left is some underwhelming action, boring dull characters, and a story that takes some time to actually get going. But then it ends with a very underwhelming climax. Honestly not as bad as I thought it was going to be, but still isn't that good. Can't really say I was disappointed because I was never looking forward to it anyway. But that's just my thoughts on it. If you've seen it, leave a comment, let me know what you think about it. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, go and drop a like on it. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time. Oh yeah, and Harry Styles shows up as Thanos' brother. Yeah, I don't care either. I have never well, I'll get used in to all it. of my two, two, one, four, one, two, three. I like the pussy and I like the trees. Smoke so much weed you wouldn't believe. You ever had your shit pushed in? <sighs> your shit pushed in. Simple question. Nah? No. I had my shit pushed in. Oh yeah, man. I had my shit pushed in, bro! Big time! <laughs>